we now request Mr. Balapirian, Council Member, Chennai Chapter, to introduce Mr. A. Balaji, General Manager Projects and Utilities, Breaks India Private Limited, to our audience. I'm here to uh, introduce our next speaker, Mr. A. Balaji. Mr. A. Balaji completed Diploma in Electrical and Electronics Engineering during 1985 and joined as Diploma Trainee in Breaks India Private Limited and taken various roles and responsibilities during this tenure of 34 plus years. At present, managing projects and utilities function, energy management system, green core requirements, sustainability in initiatives across all foundry divisions. He's also licensing with government authorities to meet the statutory requirements. He is certified internal quality system auditor for IATF 16949, ISO 14001 2015, and Environment Management System, ISO 50, 50001, 2018. He's also shouldering the responsibility of Environment Management System, MR, for the past 10 years. We invite you for the gathering, sir. IAF team members, and ladies and gentlemen, and my dear colleagues, uh, I thank the opportunity given for this presentation to address this important topic on roadmap for net zero castings at foundry industries under scope one to greenhouse gas emission reduction. This slide details about scope of emissions, especially scope one called direct emission, and scope two and scope three talks about indirect emissions, which is generated uh, entire life cycle of the product in manufacturing. Um, <coughs> scope 1 emissions, uh, you, we need to account uh, these six greenhouse gases emissions uh, like uh, carbon monoxide, methane, nitroxide and industrial gases like hydrofluorocarbon, sulfur hexafluoride and nitrogen trifluoride. This you need to account in the manufacturing facility. Scope 1 talks about the emission which is generated within the premises, I mean gate to gate. Scope 2 talks about purchase of electricity for the manufacturing facility. Scope 3 details about the emissions which is generated in the upstream as well as the downstream activities in the value chain. The scope on emissions details about the direct emissions which is generated due to fuel combustion at facilities company-owned vehicles which is used for transport application, represent top-up at the facility for maintenance activities. Similarly, topping up of CO2 fire, uh, CO2 powder for fire extinguishers. I have explained uh, some few examples to account uh, the emissions. For example, if you use petrol for internal transport application, if you consume one kl of petrol, it has got potential to generate 2.27 ton of carbon equivalent. Similarly, if you consume diesel, one kg of diesel, it has got potential to generate 2.64 ton of CO2 per kl. Similarly, if you use SKO for lateral and furnace free heating, it has got potential to generate 2.52 ton of CO2. Similarly, I have shown some few examples. The, all these emissions factor you can get it through Eco Invent Database. Also, we have service provider like CI, Simapro. Other industries, they can provide uh, these emission factor details. You need to capture right from charging to casting manufacturing and your process, product manufacturing in each stages, and you have to identify all these consumption, and you have to evaluate the emissions, which is within the factory, uh, I mean gate to gate. These are all the opportunities, uh, initiatives you can explore to reduce emission under scope one. For example, you can eliminate fossil fuel like petrol, diesel through upgradation of electrical vehicle for metal handling using forklift as well as metal handling uh, stackers, electrical operators. You can also explore biodiesel and uh, distilled pyro oil as well as electrical energy operating heating system for uh, Thundee's furnace free heating system in place of uh, fossil fuel. You can also explore Re, re, uh, replace conventional type of air conditioner with a dual inverter type uh, air conditioner which has got built-in occupancy sensors, five-star rated. Similarly, you can eliminate oxyacetylene gas cutting system 
with plasma cutting to prevent uh, this scope on emissions you can also explore uh, to eliminate uh, this fossil fuel uh, because of the dg operation using hybrid solar come wind operated uh, ups or uh, source to prevent this scope on emissions these are only few examples you can explore other opportunities also scope to emissions is nothing but in indirect emissions eh, which is generated due to purchase of electricity in the manufacturing facility uh, i have given this example if you electricity purchase from the grid i mean uh, southern part of india this you can get it from central electricity authority website so it has got potential if you consume 1 kilowatt hour it has got potential to generate 0.7 kg of co2 per unit consumed this can be compensated offset through renewable energy generation both on site and off site you can also exclude you can also explore increasing the share of renewable energy year over year from 4 to 7 percent of total energy consumption also you can explore hybrid energy source like solar wind biomass energy source hydrogen gas energy source to mitigate these emissions under scope 2 these are the opportunities on energy efficiency improvement to reduce scope to emissions indirectly you can reduce uh, energy consumption reduction through I IGBT technology of upgradation your melting holding system you can have potential of saving 8% reduction similarly if you convert uh, conventional type plant lighting with uh, either transparent sheet or led light you can have potential to reduce 50% energy reduction you can replace low efficiency conventional motors with energy efficient uh, premium motors like ie3 ie4 ie5 it has got potential to save 10% energy reduction you can also explore uh, installation of optimized power share control at melting system to reduce your maximum demand it has got potential to save 20% of your maximum dem demand this is a real time uh, saving controller through plc based operated it will measure the incoming uh, demand and it will control the melting system so that you can have saving potential of 20% reduction you can also re explore replacement of reciprocating compressor with energy efficient compressor during procurement i mean green product procurement you can also explore vfd dust dust collectors for fume extraction system as well as sand mixers also for variable loads like trimming press and other applications to optimize the energy consumption you can also explore replace replacement of conventional water pump with energy efficient water pumps you can also explore electrical operated drilling hammering machine instead of pneumatic operating machine to conserve energy to and as well as to reduce scope to emissions you can also explore increasing the share of rain water year over year from 7% to 10% you can also aim for zero liquid discharge all this water conservation initiatives indirectly to reduce energy consumption as well as to reduce scope to emissions you can explore stp treated for process application through ro system you can reduce water consumption using closed loop instead of open type cooling tower system it has got about 80% of water saving you can also replace radiator type cooling system in place of water cooled cooling towers you can explore dishwasher system instead of manual washing uh at the, at the dining i mean the washing plates you can use no energy operated magnetic system for handling itds water in the process so that you can avoid the discharging of itds water indirectly you can save energy all these initiatives to reduce scope to emissions scope 3 emissions are called indirect emissions which is generated generated due to both upstream and uh, downstream activities in the value chain i am going to discuss about here only about eight categories there are about 15 categories are there for foundry about 11 to 12 categories are applicable i am going to explain only eight categories since we accounted only this up to eight 
category 1 discussed about the purchase goods and service category 2 details about capital goods and category de de details about the fuel and energy related activities not included in scope 1 similarly category 4 talk details about upstream transportation distribution category 5 details about waste generated in operations category 6 business travel emissions category 7 employee commuting emissions category 8 upstream least resort emissions i will detail in the next slide you need to account for example under category 1 and 2 if you purchase any equipment or raw material you have to collect the purchase value as well as the raw material in tons that you have to convert into dollar and you have to multiply the corresponding emission factor with respect to the type of material or type of equipment category so you will get total emissions similarly you have to account for rest of the other purchase item as well as the capital item you will get the total emissions category 3 details about fuel and energy related activities not included scope 1 that means the upstream emissions for example it is talks about the if you purchase electricity we already account in the scope 2 there we have uh, upstream emissions say if you take thermal energy uh, the coal which is uh, right from the mining to generation factory as well as the transmission distribution loss total put together you will get uh, that emissions for example if you consume 1 kilowatt hour energy it has got potential to generate 0.92 kg of co2 per kilowatt hour consumed category 4 details about upstream transportation distribution that is fuel used for uh, incoming raw material for manufacturing you have to calculate how much fuel you have consumed uh, and you have to multiply the corresponding emission factor you will get total emissions category 5 details about waste generated operations for example if you dispose any kind of waste uh, and the type of fill whether you are filling a landfill or recycle based on the type of Uh, disposing of your waste and uh, the fuel used by the vehicle you have to calculate with the corresponding emission factor you will get the total emission generations for category 5 category 6 details about business travel emissions uh, normally used by the employee for official travel uh, either by car or plane or train you have to calculate the fuel used from the net and you have to multiply the corresponding emission factor you will get the total emissions also you have to include the scope one to emissions where you stayed in the hotel which i not presented here that also you should be included in the business travel category 7 details about employee commuting uh, which is fuel used for, for the official, official traveling i mean uh, those are visiting to factory up and down you have to calculate category 8 details about upstream least assets suppose if you got uh, any remote office uh, as well as any warehouse you need to calculate the scope one to emissions of the particular office then uh, with the emission factor you will get total emissions these are the opportunities available for uh, scope 3 reduction under category 1 for example you can explore reduce emissions through purchasing of energy efficient products and avoiding the virgin materials you can implement thermal reclamation which already present in our earlier presenter so that you can significantly reduce emissions you can also avoid co consumption by upgradation of induction melting in place of cupola melting you can optimize the charge mix in melting through improving real time software analysis of metal chemistry using spectrum analysis ce meter atos instrument and the category 2 you can explore uh, which is recyclable wood furnitures you can explore recyclable packages explore on grid and uh, so on grid and solar wind system you can explore energy efficient equipments category 3 uh, details about the emission uh, reduction i mean uh, if you increase the share renewable energy through hybrid source like wind solar biogas you can eliminate uh, this transmission and distribution losses as well as the other emissions increase the share of pyroil i think uh, the pyroil is generated from the municipal solid 
waste. You can also explore biodiesel, biogas as an uh, alternate fuel for heating application like uh, for annealing process as well as furnace and thundi sheeting purpose. You can also explore electrical operated vehicle in place of fossil fuel operated vehicle. You can upgrade induction melting by shopping cupola and you can plan shutdown during a, which is imposed by the tangent co on monthly basis to announce shutdown and you can operate in the other power available day. Similarly, you can also minimize the emissions uh, through uh, procure raw material as close to your factory. You can optimize raw material consumption in melting as well as the sand plant. You can upgrade and hiring the BS6 vehicle ends as well as electric operated vehicle. You can optimize the vehicle transport through rerouting. These are all the other opportunities under category 5 and 6. You can explore year over year 10% reduction on landfill through installation of mechanical or thermal reclamation plant. You can also explore oil filtration activities for your hydraulic and transformer oil to extend the life of the oil through oil analysis. And you can uh, avoid waste disposal through utilization of uh, construction activities of the sand as well as the block making. You can also explore virtual meeting to avoid travel. You can also explore electric vehicle, pooling of people, and you can use utilization of public utilities. Under category 7, you can explore, encourage people, your employee, to come with the electrical operated two-wheelers. Those who aged people can use bicycle, those who are traveling within two kilometers from your factory premises. You can also explore electric bus and pull the people. Category 8, I am not displayed because uh, you can refer my earlier slides uh, which I given the opportunities and the scope on the reduction. Thank you, gentlemen. Any questions for uh, Balaji, sir? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Sir, now uh, they are inquiring about uh, carbon footprints for uh, the products that we manufacture and supply. Uh, now, uh, uh, is it like we have anything like that for castings, what we manufacture, f footprint, uh, yeah. how much carbon dioxide is being generated for a kg or a ton of castings? Yes. Uh, you can account the scope on two emissions, say. Or you can also add uh, scope 3. But most of the industries only now they are starting with scope 1, 2 emissions only. So our foundry is also accounted. Eh? We are 50 uh, percent reduced uh, compared to other foundry industry. Say we are in the range of uh, 1.5 ton of uh, CO2 per kg of castings. A ton of castings. Similarly, you can also account uh, whatever I shown now. You can account uh, the emissions and the scope on two, you can calculate, you can add the emissions, you, you should uh, divide by your uh, product manufacturing, you will get the emissions. Any target in mind, sir, uh, as how much uh, maybe in the near future we would be targeting at? Yeah, uh, now uh, we have facility to enroll into the CDP program. So if you enroll into CDP program, uh, they will tell you where uh, your score that you can treat that as a benchmark and you can move forward. Otherwise, you can compare your fear industry also. One is those emission which is within your premises. So, what are the various activities you carry out within your own premises? And those activities which are emitting carbon, okay? So, that it is, even it is a greenhouse gas, then you need to do the inventorization of the GHG based on various activities, whether this activity is now involved in the emission of a carbon. So all those activities are to be listed. And then as Balaji has explained to you, with the scope on emission, if you burn one kiloliter of petrol, if you burn one kiloliter of diesel, if you burn one kiloliter of SKO, if you use one kg of carbon dioxide, for especially for fire extinguishers and all that, if you use uh, this uh, CFC, Okay, for uh, your uh, refrigerant, for filling up, uh, topping up your uh, air conditioners. All such things will come under the scope on emission. So all this ought to be accounted and then 
this comes under total scope 1. And then you go for a scope 2, which is predominantly on energy purchased. So what is the total energy purchased, which is on your energy bill, obviously every month an energy bill. So the energy purchased predominantly if it is of a coal based energy, if you are trying only from tangent co, it is a predominantly coal based energy. For coal based energy, for every kilowatt hour, the extent of the carbon dioxide emission is also given here with the source where it is obtained from. So total kilowatt hours, what you used for the month under scope 2, what is the total emission under scope 1, add up all together, what is your total production? So, so much of a tons of castings per ton production. So, you just have this ratio which will give you a clear ratio on per ton of castings what I produce is what per ton of carbon dioxide equivalent which I emit. So, that becomes the first data, right? So, you don't have any benchmark now. First, have this data. This you need to have this continuously being evaluated, which is, which is called inventorization of the GHG, okay? Then you can, as Mr. Balaji said, you look at your peers. What do they do? Again, you can able to improve upon. So what are the ways and means by which you can improve upon is what is explained in the uh, uh, presentation on the scope one f f scope as well in the scope two scores. So this when you start practicing or because it is not an overnight show, it will take many, many months, rather years to come up to this uh, situation wherein you can able to proudly say that the ton of carbon dioxide generated what is used per ton of castings, what I produced, this reduce, gets reduced over a period of five years, six years, as Mr. Satimuthi sir had shown. What is the extent of the reduction in the usage of the sand? So like that, you can able to proactively work, continuously work, it's a daily work. It is not an overnight show anymore. Most of the industry is working only scope one two. Only a few industries, they start at scope three emissions. So you can benchmark. Uh, sir, recently, yeah. uh, like last week, I was uh, talking to somebody who was working on this uh, carbon footprints, uh, and uh, where they are saying that uh, from January 2023, any exports to Europe, uh, they wanted uh, to have uh, very less uh, uh, carbon footprints, or else uh, there ha is a penalty clause attached to it. Uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, now, uh, our government also working on uh, equipments which yeah. will uh, reduce the carbon dioxide, where, like for example, fumes. Uh, so this is something that uh, there is statutory requirement that is going to come very soon to us. Uh, we do know that we have a target of net zero by 2070, but uh, so that is what we just wanted to know if there is something, a target that we are working towards. First you I, need I got to the account. answer, sir. I got the yeah. answer. Uh, yeah. I got the First answer. you need to account, then you should uh, set a target. Yes. Uh, I think in the morning presentation also we have seen uh, um, our Prime Minister target. By 2070, we are going to achieve the net zero. But similarly, other industries can plan. That's what uh, I have presented. Uh, you can start accounting, then you can plan at least reduction uh, year over year, what best possible through what are the initiatives which I have presented. You can also explore the other opportunities. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Balaj, sir, for taking us uh, through a walkthrough of uh, how we can move towards uh, net zero castings. May I now request our uh, Chennai chapter council member, Mr. K. Hema Prasad, to please uh, felicitate uh, Balaj, sir, with the uh, traditional Angavatsram. May now request Mr. Raj Mohan, uh, Council Member, IAF Chennai Chapter, to felicitate Balaji Sir with a memento and a foundry Metallica book. Thank you, gentlemen.